In this video, we'll build on our custom spellbook some more. We're going to add Scorching Ray to it, so that when you click a button, the user will be prompted to choose what level spell they're going to cast. And when they click Submit, they'll get their spell slots decremented appropriately, and the correct number of rays will be rolled along with damage for each of those rays. Alright, let's get started. So we'll go to our game's settings page, and we're going to go down to our API scripts. And I'm going to go into the custom spell book that we built last time around. And if you didn't see that first video, I'll drop a link to it down below, uh, and you can pick it up and, and go from there. So we're going to click on custom spell book, and I'm going to zoom in on this so it's a little easier to read. There we go. And here's that magic missile that we did last time. Well, this time around, we're going to do Scorching Ray. So we're going to start out here. We're going to create a new function called... Creatively enough, Scorching Ray. And we're going to pass in the spell level for that Scorching Ray. Okay, so curly braces. So everything within these two curly braces here is going to be our Scorching Ray. This is going to operate very similarly to what we did with Magic Missile. And we're going to start out here with a variable for the number of rays. So var number of rays. Now how many rays that the spell throws depends on what level you cast at. At level 2, which is the first level you can cast this at, it's going to throw 3 rays. But then if you cast at level 3, it throws a 4th ray. If you cast it at level 4, it throws a 5th ray. At level 5, it's a 6th ray, and, and so on. So basically what you get is 3 plus the spell level minus 2. So you think about that. At 4th level, we're going to throw 3 rays plus... 4 minus 2, so 3 plus 2 is 5. That gives us the, the correct amount of rays that we're going to throw. So we've got our number of rays there, and then just like before with the magic missile, we're going to have the ray output. This is going to contain the actual uh, attack and damage rolls. We're just going to start by setting that equal to an empty string. Okay, now I want to put a little bit of error checking into this, because has to be cast with at least level 2. You can't cast Scorching Ray at a lower level than level 2. So I'm just going to put in a little bit of error handling here. We're going to say if spell level is less than 2, then we're going to throw an error message to our, our user. We're going to say that uh, send chat, that's going to be coming from the custom spell book, that the Scorching Ray requires at least a level two spell slot. Okay, so that way uh, they get notified about that and then we're just going to jump out of here. We're going to return out of the function. With that done, now let's actually get into the guts of the function here. So we're going to do very similar to what we did up here in the magic missile. We're going to create a loop. We're going to say four counter equals one and then it's going to be counter while the counter is less than or equal to the number of rays. And then we're going to increase the counter by one. So we're basically just looping over and we're going to do this set of operations in between these two curly braces. We're going to do those repeatedly for each ray. All right, so what are we doing for each ray? Well, if we go back to the output that I showed you earlier, we're going to make an attack roll, which is going to be 1d20 plus our spell attack bonus. So we're going to do one attack roll for each ray, and we're going to roll 2d6 fire damage for each of those rays. So that's what we need to do within the body of the for loop here. So again, this is going to look very similar to what we did with the magic missile. I'm going to say that ray output plus equals, and just like before, we're going to start building this into the template format. So I'm going to use the backtick string format here, because I'm going to need to do a little bit of variable substitution. And I'm going to say two curly braces, ray, and then dollar sign, open curly brace, counter, closing curly brace. That's going to allow me to substitute in the value of counter here into the text that I'm outputting. And I'm going to say attack. So this is going to be ray, one attack, ray, two attack, and so on, just like we saw in the output there. And the attack is going to be an inline roll. So it'll be 1d20. And then we need to add the character's spell attack bonus. So it'll be plus, and then at symbol, open curly brace. And this is where things get tricky. We can't use selected 
here. You know, sometimes you, you could say selected and then spell attack bonus, right? And that would give you the selected token spell attack bonus. This unfortunately will not work for our purposes because ultimately we're going to use a send chat message to pump this information back into the actual chat box. And when you send information in via the send chat message, you have to provide the character's name. You can't use selected. So we need our character's name here. I need, uh, my character's name's Jarek. I need Jarek's name. Okay, so we can get that easily enough. We just need to restructure some of the existing code we already have. So let's jump back into our script here. And I'm going to scroll back up to the top. And here's the function that we built last time around, the actual custom spell book. Uh, what I'm going to do is take these lines here the token id token and character id i'm just going to cut those and i'm going to put them above the switch statement and if you remember what these were doing was it was getting a reference to the selected token and it was figuring out the id of the character that it represents well we're going to do that we're going to move those up and then we're also going to create a new variable called token name and that's going to be token get name so that'll give us the name of the token and then what we can do is pass that name into the scorching ray spell all right so for that what we're going to do is we're going to come down to our scorching ray function and we're going to pass in another parameter we're going to say token name so we're going to pass in the spell level we're casting at and who's casting it so now what we're going to do is down here in the attack roll, we're going to change this selected that I put in, we're going to change that to another dollar sign substitution, and that's going to be token name. Okay, so we've got our attack that's going out here. We're going to roll 1d20 plus our spell attack bonus, and that's going to be what appears in the left-hand side of the output. Now we need the right-hand side of the output, which is the damage. So for that, we're just going to append to this, we're going to say equals... And it'll be another inline roll of 2d6 fire damage. All right. And there we go. That's it. That's all we need for, for the loop. We're going to do that for each ray that we have. So now that we've got all of our rays taken care of, what we're going to do is take that information and we're going to pump it back into the chat. We're going to display the results. And what I can do is I can actually copy and paste these lines that we did up here in the magic missile. Right. I'm just going to copy these, paste them down here. And I'm going to change the output message a little bit. We're going to change this to be Scorching Ray. And we're going to change Dart Output. I'm going to change that to Ray Output. So again, just copy and paste that. There we go. And then send chat API the output message. So that's going to send our information back into the chat box. So that gets us the Scorching Ray itself taken care of. Now we need to go back to the top again, and we're going to add into this switch statement. You remember last time I said that we could make this spell book work for multiple spells? Well, here we go. We're going to put in another case statement, and we're going to say Scorching Ray. And we're going to call the Scorching Ray spell that we made. And we're going to pass in the spell level and the token name and then we're gonna break and there we go so now our custom spell book can handle both magic missile and scorching ray so now we'll save that and then now that we've done that we can come back into our script and we can cast scorching ray what level level two and you notice we didn't get what we were expecting so let's come back into our code for a minute and I realize what I did wrong here. You see I've got these two open curly braces here. I forgot to close those. Let's save the script and try again. Scorching Ray. There we go. That's what we were after. So now we've got our Scorching Ray coming out here. We've got our attack roll being calculated properly with the d20 roll plus our spell attack bonus. That gives us our 2d6 fire damage for each of these. And let's go ahead. Let's do that again. Let's put this at, say, level 6. That's going to give us a bunch more rays. Submit that. And there we go. Yeah, that gives us the initial 3 rays plus 6 minus 2 is 4. So that'd be seven rays total. So that's being calculated properly. And we've got the attack rolls and the damage rolls being put out for all of them.
So there you go. That's how we can add the Scorching Ray spell to our custom spellbook. I'm going to be putting out more spells into the spellbook as we go along. But in the meantime, folks, just want to say thank you very much for your time and attention. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, have a great day.